On the pole is Leonard Roderick driving car number four for Flash Racing. This is his first Delano pole of the season. The main news in the TM Master Cup series is that the MCMA teams have sort of reared their ugly head again, but this time, to their credit, they appear to be doing some good for the series. As some of you may be aware, the uh, Champ Car Race in New York City is having some difficulties because uh, several of the support categories have uh, pulled out over concerns of the actual course there. And the MCMA's proposal is to run a TM Master Cup Series race on a Saturday in the streets of New York, possibly as an exhibition race. Uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, what uh, who will be invited to this race, and since it's a non if it would be a non-championship race, not every team would be obligated to show up. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on some of those details. But it appears that the main driving forces behind this event are Thomas Mitchell, the owner of Mitchell and & Sons, and the uh, Majestic Motorsports team. It looks like they're beginning to negotiate uh, this race by themselves. Now, if they're able to get a New York City street race on the TM Master Cup Series calendar for the long term, I guarantee you that'll be enough to see both of those teams back on the grid for 2013. As for the rest of the MCMA teams, I'm not entirely sure of their involvement, but apparently their sponsors uh, sort of told them that uh, they would like an extra race as well. And uh, having a street race in New York certainly doesn't hurt, uh, as that is one of the largest markets in America. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. As Roderick gets a good start on Davina Hinton in car number six, uh, Matthias Taub in car number ten. Of course, started third as you see Taub having a good start. Davina Henton dropping back. Adrian Devereaux, the championship leader, as you may have seen, didn't qualify too well either. Uh, but so this will shake up the points. The Freedom for Palestine car, Dale Roswell, the 22, having a great opening stint to the race, it looks like. Roswell gets a good start. He's running in third. Uh, the Black Diamond team doesn't exactly have the most money, and Roswell's giving that, that car a heck of a run. Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car is also has a pretty good run going as he's inside the top 10. In this car, he's about to lose a place to Zelda Ashby in the 55, but it's good to see Kevin Dwyer running well. Uh, this is a track he's very familiar with. He's won here uh, a couple of times in long and long time ago, but uh, we're going to have to wait and see how this race goes. Yuli Nasova and Anthony Griffith make contact. Nasova spins the car out, saves it, but then uh, Vijay Pushanda goes around in the back, and that's what brings out the first caution of the event on lap two. Uh, we're going to see uh, Pushanda gets into the back of Waters and spins himself out. Tom Delgado, nowhere to go, piles into the uh, 42 car. The uh, 37 car, Tom Delgado, drops out of the race due to some radiator damage here. Uh, for the most part, uh, he's sort of been thrashed by Lewis Kingston, and it can't be too good for his self-esteem. But even regardless, he's still been running well this season. Matthias Taub in car number 10 reported engine problems from the start of the race, and uh, the 10 car is out of the race already. So uh, if we get a green flag run, or for some of these other cars behind Taub that are pitting, like Davina Henton, could come to the front in a hurry. Uh, anyway, now here we have an interesting situation on the restart because Lewis Kingston and Ian Cooper are apparently not happy with the 74 car driven by Bobby Porto this week. And uh, that caused a big jam up on the start and a lot of confusion and yeah, I saw that coming and can people stop hitting BJ Pushan? No, we haven't gotten 10 laps in. He's been in two incidents. Uh, can we stop hitting him? Thank you. Uh, Craig Mummert in car number 29 is leaving the pits. He hit, crashes all the way through Peter Short's pit crew, comes flying for it in the back of the M&J crew. Now the 29 car is hitting several crewmen in the pit, and he was immediately pulled off the racetrack. Craig Mummert is wanted out of James Dalton Racing uh, for some time, and he's at and uh, Dalton has told him he uh, will give him an early release if he let if Mummert lets him know by uh, next Saturday. However, at this rate, uh, after hitting uh, I think five people in the pits, uh, crewmen Mummert won't even be racing next week because the uh, he want was wanted in the hauler immediately. Leonard Roderick and Dale Roswell did not stop, as well as several other cars inside the top uh, inside the top five. But it uh, looks like everyone from Savaral on down did, uh, in order to take fuel, tires, whatever. But uh, anyway, going back to Bobby Porto. Now, he's running the 74 this week because Melanie Cleveno is in France running a Team Europe event. And uh, Mel uh, Melanie Cleveno is actually on the outside of the front row for that race. Um, I'm not entirely sure how she did in that race, but... Uh, here is Bobby Porto, a former Arla champion, uh, having an okay run. He's apparently roughed up Lewis Kingston and Ian Cooper, so uh, I'd say he's kind of got a target on his back, especially that 17 car right there. Um, as you can see, the officials wanted to investigate um, the incident between those two uh, between those two cars. Anyway, Adrian Devereaux got pinged for jumping a restart and was called in to uh, do a uh, drive through the pit lane. However, I don't think he did anything wrong, but he's all the way back in 29th place. He didn't qualify particularly well. 
uh, messed up on both laps in qualifying. He won here last year, but uh, this rate, he won't be backing that up. Adrian Dever having a very, very uh, miserable weekend so far. Roderick beginning to pull away, and the only car quicker than Roderick in final practice is Matthias Taub. He's out of the race, so I don't think Roderick is, uh, has too many concerns at the moment. Car number four is uh, just beginning to pull away a bit. In second place, Arto Kekkonen, Taub's teammate, was also very quick in practice, and he won in Ohio. Um, now, his teammate went out and did mechanical problems, as you saw earlier, but that's not worrying Arto Kekkonen for some reason, even though if I was Arto Kekkonen and my teammate went out in lap four, I'd be very worried that... Uh, that a my car would have the same problem. All the way back in 23rd place, we find Dan Lechleiter and car number 110. This is one of the Lycoyas, and uh, Lechleiter, driving for his own team, has been pretty quick this weekend, and the Lycoyas, as we all know, have been very, very strong on the short tracks. This is his final independent trophy run. Here's another one of the Lycoyas, Tommy Moore in car number 52. He's running in fourth place, and the Lycoya power working very well for him so far. Moore and Lechleiter are in the top 10 in all the practice sessions, and uh, at the rate he's going, I'd say Tom Moore is the favorite to win the Independence Trophy, and uh, I think he'll do it quite convincingly. Uh, the Lycoyas have sort of been uh, on a league of their own on the short ovals, but it just doesn't look like uh, they've just had the best opportunities sometimes. It seems late in the race, things have gone against them. Greg Woodard in the factory Lycoya team is running in seventh. The uh, the Timmys have brought the Lycoya Interceptor to this race. They tested this car and running it instead. I really don't know why Lycoya is running two different models instead of pouring all their resources into just one. But uh, Terra International Motorsports and Greg Woodard having a good run. Michael Madrigal, the other independent trophy car, running in 26th place. The MJ Independent Trophy program being its usual disappointing self. The Volpe Mates battle over 11th place. Packer Carroll in the 2, Davina Henton in the 6. Uh, the smart money is on Packer Carroll staying with that team, and he'll get a new sponsor, and that uh, that new sponsor will be sponsoring both of the Volpes. Davina Henton, car number six, of course, we believe is leaving that team at the end of the year. Uh, to where, we don't know. We believe Lynx will be starting its own team and will take Henton with them. Peter Short in car number 19 is running in 17th place, and he gets tagged. Uh, he tags Ian Cooper, then he gets tagged by Kirk Pliskin, goes around into the pits. Look out, Blake Camphausen. Camphausen gets into the 19 car, and uh, that just puts, uh, well, a damper on a pretty good start, actually, for Peter Short in this Black Diamond car. Uh, this is his second oval race of his career. He's uh, been having a lot of fun this weekend. Leonid Roderick restarted with the lead. Uh, Dale Roswell in car number 22 is running in second place in the Freedom for Palestine entry. That is Peter Short's teammate, but Roderick has a good run over the uh, lap car of Jose Luis Martinez, who he intends to keep a lap down because Martinez is also pretty quick in practice. So uh, I think Roderick wants to uh, sort of eliminate a potential rival that way. Michael Sykes, a few laps down, gets turned around by Yamino Tenshi, and he takes Ian Cooper and two of the Lycoyas. That's Greg Woodard, the 41, Dan Leglight of the 110. But uh, there was some damage to the C-Post in that 777 car, and uh, the officials wouldn't let Ian Cooper bring that car back on the racetrack. And uh, Team EFR, I don't think was too happy about that, but I think there was enough damage that uh, to the right side of that 777 car to justify uh, keeping it uh, in the garage and off the track. Now, this is after the yellow flag. Kevin Dwyer is running in ninth place when Packer Carroll turns the 11 car of Ryan Matthews in front of him, and poor Kevin Dwyer, nowhere to go, gets uh, piled into that. And uh, Dwyer shakes his fist at uh, Packer Carroll, obviously very frustrated. He had a great run going. And, uh, of course, as, as usual, something happens to him to uh, hamper him in uh, what's been a pretty good weekend for Kevin and the Team Star USA. They've had uh, so much bad luck this year. And, uh, okay, the yellow is out now. And uh, Packer Carroll just runs over the back of Ryan Matthews, and Kevin Dwyer just gets swept up into that. And, as you can see, the stewards were uh, going to look at that after the races. I think they should. But uh, I know they don't look too... Uh, fondly on incidents after the caution flag is waved, but uh, I think Packer Carroll should probably be a bit more careful in the future, uh, the rate he's been going. Anyway, Chris Johans in car number 64 is in the lead of the race, Tom Moore is second. Chris Johans, uh, of course, former Arla champion, a lot of short track experience, and uh, he started this year very, has had a very, very sloppy start to the year uh, by anyone's standards, and it looks like he's cleaned his act up because uh, lately Johans is... Uh, not really had too many incidents, except, of course, in Quebec. But anyway, Johans having a 
pretty good run in this 64 car. The Mitchell and Sons have not won a race since Daytona in 07, believe it or not. Now, they pulled the nose off of Kevin Dwyer's car, but he's up to second in this car. So, uh, I've never heard of pulling the front end off a car and all of a sudden it goes faster. Wonder if Kevin Dwyer shouldn't consider a modified career after his Master Cup career ends, but uh, hopefully that won't be for quite some time. Uh, he actually did quite, he's actually done quite a bit of sprint car racing on the side, so it's good to see Kevin Dwyer dabbling in other forms of racing to show his versatility to the fans. Um, of course, he did, he was at the fan zone here at uh, the Grand Detour of Quincy for quite some time. Charlie Waters was another guy at the fan zone. He's running in third place. So Waters, another guy who's uh, kind of was a bit of a human ping pong ball early in this season, has sort of cleaned his act up. However, he got, yes, got a bit loose off of turn two and Waters spins out. Well, I'd have to say, um, of all of Charlie Waters' mistakes this year, that's uh, probably the most understandable. Uh, we've seen a lot of people just get too much power coming off turn two and just loop it around like that. Uh, he had uh, Zach Duff to kind of help him around, uh, but Waters having a pretty good run today regardless. Arto Kekkonen in car number nine restarts the leader. Henson is second, Ashby is third. Like, remember what I said earlier about some people pitting early and taking advantage of some possible insane pit strategy? Well, that seems to be paying off. As uh, car number nine restarts in the lead, Martinez gets by. So does Peter Short and Bobby Porto, but Arto has a run on the outside to keep the 19 car lap down. However, we're going to see uh, what happens back here with Marcus Leonard in the uh, triple nine car. As he just kind of cuts off Chris Johans and spins himself out. Leonard was off the lead lap, Johans on the lead lap, and that's what brought out a caution. We had a one lap run. Martinez back on the lead lap, I believe, in car number seven. Henton restarted as the leader. Arto Kekman dove into the pits. Um, and I'm not sure why he did that, but anyway. Henton has a pretty good restart there. You'll notice nobody else really does get a good start. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, several laps down. Uh, he's just had all sorts of problems in uh, car number one. But anyway, we want to talk about a, a drama here. Let's talk about Power Stinger Incorporated and Anthony Griffith. Anthony Griffith is leaving this team after Road America, and his teammate Kurt Pliskin has um, often been accusing Anthony Griffith of sabotaging the team. But uh, for whatever reason, it seems like Kurt Pliskin always gets the good cars, good equipment, and faster pit crews. Anthony Griffith has had a lot of problems with that car, and that's put him seven laps down. No problems for Kurt Pliskin's car. Hmm. Make what you will of that. Yulina Silva, car number eight, has been fighting that car all race long. She got loose again, hit the wall, hit another wall, hit Greg Woodard and Charlie Waters, who just kind of got swept up in that. Uh, it's another caution that I... Not really sure we needed, uh, but anyway, some things just happen sometimes. The two Owen DeGarmo cars are first and second. Y uh, Yamino Tenchi is the leader, and Zelda Ashby in second. Now, Tenchi gets a great restart in this 25 car. Longtime sponsor Viento might be returning to this car uh, later this season. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, we got another stack up here. Looks like Chris Johans, Marcus Leonard, Kevin Dwyer all make a little bit of contact. Looks like everything's uh, going strongly here. But now, here comes Chris Johans as he just moves up the track right in front of the 11 car of Ryan Matthews. He saves the car, but Lewis Kingston is there, and the 17 car goes into the wall. That could have been a much bigger wreck. However, um, Kingston's car was uh, damaged beyond repair, and Kingston, who is actually sitting in contention to go for the Master Cup Championship this season, uh, goes out of the race from 15th. He's had a stellar season, even though Star Team Nomoto has really been off their game this year. Uh, Lewis Kingston in car number 17, uh, not a lucky day for him, it looks like. He won earlier in the season in Michigan. Ashby, uh, Davina Henton, Dan Leglider, and Kevin Dwyer have all used their strategies to get where they are right now, uh, kind of. Uh, they've kind of had a bit of help. As you see, Luciano Sabro in that three car on the inside lane. Uh, he's trying to get a lap back. Uh, now here is, uh, looks like Zach Duff and Scott Stoyler trying to let Leonard Roderick in. There are laps behind Roderick and they get in trouble. There goes Scott Stoyler up the wall. Now, it looked like the 5 and the 50 car slowed up a bit to let Roderick in there because Roderick was making a bonsai move in there, but at the last minute, they decided to race each other, and uh, they just kind of crowded each other and hinted into the wall. So, um, I don't know, I think Roderick was being a bit ambitious around back markers, but at the same time, I don't think the back markers were exactly uh, giving him a clear signal as to what they were doing. Now, here's some more pit lane drama. Zelda Ashby in the 55 is uh, just topping off fuel. She leaves the pits, runs over Kevin Dwyer, 
uh, is going to turn Dwyer around in the pits. Dwyer's response, put it in reverse, and jams Ashby against the pit wall, costing Ashby a lot of time in the pit lane. That would be investigated after the race, as you see right there. Tom Moore restarted as the leader, with Ryan Matthews in a strong second place, even though uh, part of the rear end's missing on that car. Uh, Moore in this 52 car, he was probably been he was probably the star of the day at Michigan and at Ohio. Both times he finished second. Uh, not sure if that was more due to due to the Lycoya or due to his experience on short ovals. Anyway, Marcus Leonard, Kevin Dwyer, and Bobby Porto all getting in trouble again, and Leonard goes up and he's out of the track. Marcus Leonard out of the track. That is caution number 10 of the day, and Leonard, we've finally seen a car go out of the track uh, today. That's kind of been one of those things that we've seen quite a lot of here. We didn't see it, I uh, haven't seen a whole lot lately, but in the past, uh, that's certainly been the case. Leonard Roderick leads from Kurt Pliskin and Packer Carroll on the restart in car number four. Roderick has shuffled his way back to the lead, and uh, of course, for this number four car, looks pretty clean compared to everyone else. Anthony Griffith is running in 29th place, seven laps down due to all his mechanical problems uh, that he's been having all day. As you see, he brushes the wall. Uh, he's trying to get out of everyone's way, and he's generally being very courteous today, which is not something I normally say about him. Kurt Pliskin, his teammate, uh, well, he was running in second. I think he's about to lose that, but uh, he hasn't been having any problems at all. Now, uh, wait a minute. Whose car was being sabotaged again? Oh, is Pliskin just complaining about having another teammate faster than him again because... I understand he wasn't too pleased about having Marcus Leonard beat him every single, uh, just about every single race last year. Uh, so I wonder if uh, there might be sour grapes on Pliskin's part. Packer Carroll in car number two it takes second place from Moore, and it looks like he's going to make a run at Roderick. However, Roderick's got a fairly big lead on him already. So uh, here's another. Here's the quickest car on the racetrack, Luciano Savaral. He's a lap down in 14th place. That's the only problem. He's quicker than the leader. Car number three, the uh, second of the Hodges Walter cars. Uh, neither of them have been uh, terribly fast in all of practice. Devereaux, of course, has been having a miserable race, and Salveral appears to have found something on this car, and it's really helping him. Now, here's Ryan Matthews running over the 08 car for no good reason, and uh, he doesn't bring out a caution. Matthews in the top 10, and it uh, looked like Griffith might have given him space, but I uh, wonder if uh, the 11 wasn't trying to bring a caution out that he needed. Anyway, here is. Uh, uh, Michael Sykes getting punted into the wall. Looks like just kind of pushed up the racetrack coming off too. Gets into Kevin Dwyer. Uh, that's going to put Kevin Dwyer out of the race due to suspension damage that he receives. And yeah, looks like Michael Sykes may have just moved up not knowing that Kevin Dwyer was there. Uh, just one of those unfortunate racing incidents. Uh, Sykes uh, continues on, but Dwyer, of course, is done. Tom Moore leads on the restart in car number 52. Nasova in the 8 car in the CRL Modified is um, the last car in the lead lap, but look at all the lap cars on the left-hand lane as they get a huge, huge run because, um, well, that eight car is not exactly getting very good acceleration uh, or good anything at this at uh, this point in time. Roderick in that number four car dives under Moore and is going to take over the lead of the race in car number four. There he goes, and now he's going to try to work around as many of the back markers as he can to put as many of those between him and the competition as possible. He's got a fight on his hands in this four car because of all that lap traffic and because, of course, uh, well, not all the lap cars are playing nice out there today. Some of them have been, uh, well, obstacles, to uh, put it rather bluntly. Moore looks like he's gotten around them, and Yamino Tenshi in that 25 car has moved up to third. Kurt Pliskin in fourth in that 16 car, the uh, Lone Ranger entry. And uh, Tenshi trying to have a look on the outside, not going to be able to do anything there. Roderick slides back, though, and Pliskin takes over second. Tom Moore is back up into the lead of the race in the 52. Pliskin has been having a very solid run today um, at his teammate's expense, perhaps. Anyway, here is the uh, 52 car of Moore as he is uh, he's still ahead of Roderick, still in the lead of the race. That's Mika Pawson in the 12 car. Uh, that is not Ryan Matthews, but there's Adrian Devereaux up ahead. Devereaux is, I believe, three laps behind the lead. And uh, his day couldn't possibly get any worse, unless he were, of course, to crash. But anyway, Roderick and Tenchi now having a pretty good battle for second as they've dispatched Kurt Pliskin. As uh, Tenchi has a run on the inside. No, Roderick gets the better run off of that, uh, off of turn four. And to come into turn one, of course, turn three is uh, much wider than one and two. But turn four uh, tightens up rather quickly. All the lap cars uh, that got by the leaders in the restart have uh, dropped back, except for Luciano Savaral. He's on, lead, he's on the lead lap in 10th. So if we get a caution, Savaral is back in the race. 
And with a car this quick, he could be a serious contender for the win. Packer Carroll is running <clears throat> back in uh, fifth place. Kurt Pliskin in fourth. These are pretty good runs from uh, these two guys who earlier in the season were, uh, well, hitting everything but the hot dog stand. But um, both of them looks like they've cleaned up their acts since then, and it looks like uh, one or two trips to the steward's office have uh, cleaned them up. Of course, Packer Carroll has been having a bit of a messy day, but uh, still running well. Of course, Ryan Matthews in the 11 car uh, is running in sixth place. He's sort of been victimized today. Uh, it's a pretty strong, good run by Matthews. He may lose this ride even if that team stays in the series because his sponsor bill is not uh, the best. Scott Bates is running in seventh place. He's been having a great run so far this season. And uh, if he keeps this run up, he could be a serious contender for the Drivers' Championship. This 88 team. Chris Johans in car number uh, 64 running in eighth place. He's relishing this opportunity here on the short tracks where he shines. And right behind him, Dan Lechleiter. Another one of the uh, Lycoya contingent. Uh, I wouldn't exactly say it's a surprise to see him in the top 10 uh, because of how strong they've been on the short ovals. But he's got some rear end damage to that car, so he's sort of hanging on. Now, Tom Moore in car 52 is approaching Greg Woodard, and he runs over Woodard! He runs over his teammate, his uh, effective teammate, and he crashes out of the lead! Tom Moore in trouble. Tenshi and tries to enter the pits and also collides with uh, Woodard and uh, Moore. Oh no, Tom Moore could have probably locked up the Independence Trophy here today, but he gets taken out um, by over-exuberance, takes out Greg Woodard, Tenshi tried into the pits, but looks like after contact with the Sova, but just couldn't slow down enough, Tenshi tried to slow down, but it just wasn't enough, so the cars first and third are out, and so is Greg Woodard, now Arto Kakinen is in trouble under the yellow, the, uh, the fuel pump on car number 9 is gone we believe, uh, and the team told us it was the same problem that affected Matthias Taub. So both of the Kesslers are out from the same problem. Arto Kakinen would have restarted as the leader, believe it or not. So a very, very disappointing day for Arto Kakinen, especially when Adrian Devereaux is not having a good day. This is a day that Kakinen needed to score points in order to gain ground in the championship. Roderick restarted in the lead. Packer Carroll second. Scott Bates in third. We're three quarters of the way through the race. And, uh... Well, it looks like Roderick uh, is going to have a, a pretty uh, tough fight to the end here. Scott Bates in that 88 car is certainly on a charge. That 88 car is really flying in this part of the race. He's gotten around Packer Carroll, as you see here. The Team EFR Journey A90 has not always been the best car, but Scott Bates is making it look like a good car. Luciano Savaral back on the lead lap, and now he's in fourth. Savaral in car number three is trying to rack up his second career win and second of the season as he tries to hold off Kirk Pliskin. Ryan Matthews is still having a strong run in sixth place as he tries to dispatch his teammate Nick Apostolin who's a couple of laps down in car number 12. As if Adrian Devereaux's day couldn't get any worse, the car number one expires on lap 150 and he exits the race from 17th place. He was four laps behind the leader and uh, really I think it's just putting him out of his misery there because uh, Frankly, it's been a disaster of a weekend, and this is the kind of weekend that his points contenders are going to need in order to catch him in the Drivers' Championship. And here is Dan Lechleiter in the 110 car, holding off Chris Johans for 7th place. Lechleiter sliding up the race track, using every bit of turn 4 that he can. Johans gets a run on him in that 64. Lechleiter pretty strong in 1 and 2, it looks like, because uh, he, he's been able to hold off Chris Johans, but using that slightly higher line in that 110 car. But here comes Chris Johans now. Johans is a bit closer, he got a better exit off two, slides it into three and four, almost takes Lechleiter out, backs off the throttle, looks like he's uh, clearly uh, being a bit more patient here, but the laps are winding down. Packer Carroll and Scott Bates battle for second place. Carroll, it's kind of the same situation we had with Johans and Lechleiter. Bates around the outside in that 88 car, but Packer Carroll's got a better run through one and two, but look at this, that side-by-side -side racing has brought Luciano Savaral in car number three up to this battle for second, and Savaral is now having a run on Scott Bates in the 88. It looks like Bates may have uh, used up his tires early in this uh, final run here, and Savaral has taken full advantage, gets around the 88 car, and away he goes. And now he is flying because he has caught up to Packer Carroll. Bates has fallen into the clutches of Kurt Pliskin in car 16. But Savaral in car number three, working on Packer Carroll in the Myosoft Volpe, car number two. And now, as Savaral is going on the inside of Carroll, he's got it. Packer Carroll doesn't really fight that too hard. He just lets Savaral go because that three car is flying. He's caught up to some of the back markers now. 
That is the 50 car of Scott Soiler, who is many, 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 many laps down. And here is Leonid Roderick in car number four. Now, Roderick is matching the pace that Savaral is setting now. So Savaral is not really gaining on Roderick anymore. But um, it's going to be a bit of a, a stretch for Savaral to run him down unless he gets a caution either way. Luciano has sort of been overshadowed for most of this season. Um, he's still a title contender, a legitimate title contender, especially since Adrian Devereaux went out of the race. But uh, I feel that the very uh, emotional Brazilian is severely underrated. Savaral, very much the kind of man who... Uh, wears his emotions on his face. Doesn't really hide anything. He was, of course, um, uh, very excited about his first win. And uh, Leonid Roderick in car number four still back in the lead of the race. But uh, I believe everyone's going to have to pit again before this race is over. And uh, Roderick hasn't stopped yet. Pliskin running in fourth place. That's car 16. He gets hooked by the lapped car of Jose Luis Martinez. Spun down into the pit lane. And Kurt Pliskin is going to bring out the 13th caution. And car 16 is definitely going to be, it's a big setback for Pliskin. It was going to be a big day for him. He's the last car on the lead lap now as we have 11 laps to go. Roderick Carroll, Matthew Savarol, and Johans. That is the that is the top five as everyone pitted under that caution flag. Roderick gets around. Pliskin puts him back a lap down. But as you see, Matthews is really making that 11 car wide as he holds off Savarol. Looks like the rest of the field having a bit of a dip, some difficulties getting by the 16. Matthew's really holding up the three car now. And uh, Roderick beginning to extend his lead. Savaral, car number three, is desperately trying to get around Ryan Matthews in car number 11 as they work around. Kurt Pliskin and they do battle for third. Savaral's got a, he's got the inside line coming off two. Savaral hooks the back of him. The 11 car spins with less than 10 to go. Luciano Savaral turned Ryan Matthews out of a podium contention. And Savaral hooks the 11 and spins him down into the pit lane. But the 11 car of Matthews and the 3 car of Savarol were battling very, very hard after that restart. I'm not entirely sure Savarol needed to do that, but Ryan Matthews' day is done. There is suspension damage to the 11 car and a heartbreaker for the Majestic Motorsports team. Three laps to go. Roderick, Carroll, Savarol, the order as Roderick gets the restart. Luciano Savarol gets a great start in car number three. He looks to the inside of Carroll coming into one, and he's got it. Savaral has taken over second. Now he's going to have a run on Roderick in the four, but Roderick holds the outside. Here they come into three. Savaral on the inside. He's got it right now, but Roderick's going to have a better run off. Down the front straightaway, Savaral. Savaral does not have enough to clear Roderick there. Roderick holds the lead. Two to go this time. Savaral dives through in the inside in one and two. It looks like he's got it this time. Luciano Savaral comes to the front. And now he's going to be able to get a better run into... He's be able to cut off Roderick. Yes, he is. Savarol to the lead of the race with one lap to go now. This is the first lap he's led all race long. Roderick tries to fight back with a crossover on the inside, but Savarol is going to have the better run into three because the outside is where you're going to want to be coming off four. Roderick's got it coming to the line. Savarol on the outside across Roderick, and he's going to take his second win of the season. Luciano Savarol in a thrilling finish. Takes the win. And the Brazilian driver, very excited, was jumping for joy despite that controversial incident with Ryan Matthews with just a couple of laps to go. Roderick finishes a strong and very close second, leading over half the race, but just under a tenth of a second shy of taking home his second win of the season. Packer Carroll finishes the podium in third, and Chris Johans, the last car in the lead lap. A very quiet and clean day for Johans, sees him come home fourth. Dan Lechleiter, Miss Q late in the race, uh, still leaves him a top five, and a great finish to his independence trophy run. Scott Bates in the 88 car, sixth. Dale Roswell in the Freedom for Palestine, 22. Jose Luis Martinez, Peter Short, a great finish for the four-time Formula A champion. And Zelda Ashby complete the top 10. Charlie Waters, a good clean day for him. Bobby Porto uh, ruffled a few feathers in his return to the series. Michael Madrigal finishes his Independence Trophy campaign on a good note. Yuli Nasova had a pretty sloppy day in that eight car. Blake Kamphausen didn't really see much of him all day. Ditto Zach Duff. Michael Sykes was kind of all over the place and uh, not really his own fault. He just kind of got into a lot of other people's shenanigans. Mika Pasenet had all sorts of mechanical problems early in the race. And of course, Kirk Pliskin and Ryan Matthews both dropped out. Pliskin had mechanical problems under that final yellow flag, and uh, he still is credited with a 19th place finish. Scott Stoiler actually finished the race, and he was in 21st, uh, many laps behind uh, the 12 car of Mika Pasanen. Now, Ryan Matthews is the guy you have to feel sorry for. He was in podium contention when Savarol kind of took him out of third. However, uh, Savarol did apologize to Matthews during his post-race interview, and uh, and to be honest, I felt that Savarol's apology was sincere. That's not the kind of driver he is, and uh, 
he seemed to take it very personally that it happened, but uh, I think he was still very pleased to have won the race uh, overall. With Savarall's second win of the year, that gives him also the lead in the championship because his teammate, Adrian Devereaux, didn't finish. Arto Kekkonen didn't finish either. Leonid Roderick, of course, came up second. Scott Bates and Lewis Kingston, I think, are the major contenders for the title. However, Kingston's hopes are slowly fading unless he can, of course, can rekindle some of that Michigan magic. Yulina Sova on the eight car is still a kind of a dark horse, but I think uh, the Cats of team's really going to step it up if they're going to be a serious contender. Um, Packer Carol, Zelda Ashby, Michael Sykes rounding up the top ten. I'm a little surprised it took Packer Carroll this long to get in the top 10 in points, but uh, fair is fair, he's there anyway. And I think if uh, he'd shown the form he has now earlier in the season, he'd be also a serious contender. Jose Luis Martinez has done a good job. Scott Sawyer shot himself in the foot by leaving uh, the Michelin Suns team, Matthias Taub, Davina Henson, uh, Chris Johans in that 64 car, he's turned the season around uh, quite remarkably. Mika Possum in the 12 car, uh, sort of there because of his Cariala finish, and he hasn't really... Uh, scored a huge amount of points since, but uh, to his credit, he's doing a good job. Dale Rosal, the 22 car, is doing a heck of a job in that underfunded car. Yamino Tenshi in the 25 car, uh, doing the best she can. Marcus Leonardi in that recalcitrant Zenos, and Tom Delgado in the 37 car, who's missed three races this year, still has 105 points. And you're probably wondering what the Independence Trophy looks like, and if Mika Turbo has been dethroned. Well, it's now a Lekoya 1-2 in the Independence Trophy, with Tom Moore dethroning Turbo and Lecklider taking over second. Moore has 250, Lecklader 247, that's enough to beat Turbo, and uh, unfortunately for both of them, that's their last race. Uh, it's still very, very close with the top four cars, the Independence Trophy. They've, uh, of course, they've all run their four races. Michael Madrigal did as well, so we won't be seeing any more Independence Trophy runs from them. However, one very serious contender for the Independence Trophy is that 41 car of Greg Woodard, and we'll be seeing him at the Round of Wisconsin at Road America.